Hack the Entrepreneur is part of Rainmaker FM, the digital business podcast network. Find more great shows and education at rainmaker.fm. Let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor, designcrowd.com. Have you ever considered starting your own business or launching a startup? If the answer is yes, then you're probably going to want a great logo design as well as a website made. This is where designcrowd.com can help. Here's how it works. Step one, simply visit designcrowd.com slash hack. You will get your special offer for being a listener. Then you just post a brief description describing the design that you need. For example, a brand new logo. Step two, Design Crowd will then open your project to their 500,000 designers to respond to your offer. Step three, within hours, you will receive your first design and over the course of the next three to 10 days, a typical project will receive 60 to 100 different designs from designers around the world. Step four, you then simply pick the best design that you like and the designers will get paid. As a special bonus, if you do not find a design you want, absolutely no problem. The risk is not on you. Design Crowd has a money back guarantee. Crowdsourcing design on Design Crowd helps you access the collective creativity of hundreds of thousands of designers that will save you money, time, and resources and help you find the best designs possible. Check out designcrowd.com slash hack. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash hack. And you'll get up to $100 off your very next project. Welcome to Hack the Entrepreneur, the show which reveals the fears, habits, and inner battles behind big name entrepreneurs and those on their way to joining them. Now, here is your host, John Naster. Hey, hey, this is Hack the Entrepreneur. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm your host, John Naster, but you can call me Johnny. My guest today is an experiential marketer and an entrepreneur. While still in college, my guest began working with singer-songwriter Ray Kennedy. As Kennedy's manager, he discovered the deficiencies and frustrations that artists endured, and he began to research ways to create additional revenue sources and increase audience. Upon graduating, he founded Mirrored Media, an experiential marketing company. Since then, they've received $500,000 in angel funding and created campaigns for clients like Google Play, Acura, 20th Century Fox, and many, many more. Now, let's hack. Justin Lefkovich. Before we get rolling here, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Braintree. I know you remember the first dollar you made in business. It's, it's a hard thing to forget. It's one of the greatest parts of being an entrepreneur. And now you want to grow until your business makes your millionth or billionth dollar. But have you found the right payments partner to grow with you? Braintree lets you accept every way to pay, from PayPal to Apple Pay and everything in between. All it takes is one simple integration. And it doesn't matter what currency your customers use because Braintree lets you accept over 130 of them. To learn more about how you and your company can grow with Braintree, visit braintreepayments.com slash hack. That's braintreepayments.com slash hack. We are back with another episode of Hack the Entrepreneur. And today... Today, we have a very, very, very special guest. Justin, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely my pleasure, man. This is going to be a lot of fun, I think. I'm glad we can do this. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Let's jump into it. Justin, as an entrepreneur, can you tell me what is the one thing that you do that you feel has been the biggest contributor to your successes so far? You know, I think for me, it's it's probably my one of my best and worst traits. I think it's just my unrelentlessness. The, it, it just in general, where when I want something, I'll set my eyes on something, and I have to have that thing, and I'm unrelentless until I have it. So, I mean, as a kid, you can imagine like my babysitters. That was my number one thing, the number one horrible thing of like I wanted something and I got it, and I fought until I had it. Obviously, it's turned into a little bit more of a positive trait where I think 
I'll set my eyes on something. So I think my first thing is actually knowing what I want, very specifically knowing what I want, like an exact thing, and then not stopping until I get that. So whatever it takes to get it, I will eventually get that. And I think it's it's been a negative in some of my life as far as, you know, like just it's a an obnoxious trade at times. But in business, <laughs> I think it actually helps because it's something where I'll set my eyes on something. And again, it's a, a very specific thing. I'll know exactly what I want and I will do whatever it takes to get that thing. I love it. You are 250 something interviews in. You're the first person who started with it's like kind of a best worst trait of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's look at it, honestly, it's it's I'm sure it's obnoxious to other people, but especially when I was a kid. I, I remember very specifically one of my babysitters was telling me that I all I wanted was Sin City, like the 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 game, the the the, the PC game, right when it came out, and he had it on his computer. And apparently, I was just obnoxious, horrible, and I would do anything I could to play this game until finally I broke him down enough and I, and I got it and I played it that, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that was a great thing, but you know, now <laughs> I think it's, it's more of a, it's taken on a, a healthier role in the sense of, you know, whether it be a client or, you know, a certain level of business or whatever that may be. Like, I, I think I really, I identify what it is and then I set my goal on that and I will, you know, day in, day out, do whatever it takes until I've accomplished that goal. And normally within that time, I'll also find the next thing. So there's never really a down period. I'm always, you know, obsessed about getting something. Yeah. And so I think like three times now you've mentioned in three minutes that you have this exact vision of what you want and then you just are unrelentless to it. But I need to know, how do you find that? And how do you know that it's not like the wrong thing to be unrelentless about? Unrelentless about? You know, I don't think you do know. And I'm sure I've been unrealized about. And again, it can be anything trivial. It could be like an actual physical thing that I just see something and I really want it and I have to have it. Or it can be, you know, of course, in a, the business sense, more general, like of actual, you know, business goals. And I don't think I do know if it's the right thing and wrong thing. I'm sure many times it's been a wrong thing. It's been maybe something vain or something that didn't really matter in the overarching, you know, business you know, plan goal, but it's been something that I've set my eyes on and knew I wanted it. And I don't think it, it comes in a calculated, but you know, it, it, it's calculated to some extent, but I think it's more of just, it's that feeling, it's that gut of, okay, I need to have this. And like, whether it be, you know, getting on like the Inc 5000 list or whether it be something like something like that press wise, or it's okay. You know, I love what full screen is doing with their business. Like I really want them as a client. Full screen. I just had him on. Oh, uh, George? Nope. Unless it's a different full screen we're talking about. They were just acquired, right? Yeah, yeah. The the influencer mark, yeah. I had I had the co I had the, there was two co founders maybe? Yeah, George George and George and Ezra. George is like the oh. main CEO. Okay. I, yeah. Oh no, no, no. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was acquired by full screen. <laughs> That's what it was. Sorry. Tom Giles. Tom Giles. Oh yeah. yeah That's yeah. awesome, yeah. Yeah, he was just on just in June, I believe. And oh, that's he's just been acquired by full screen. That's, he's working with them now. So. Yeah, that, I mean, they are, they're a monster. They're a powerhouse now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so, so obviously now you have multiple sort of like, it's not just like one thing that you want. Because like you said, it could be trivial. It could be vain even. But and then there could be also like, I want this like Inc. 500. So it's not just one thing at a time and you just like focus on it. It's like you're focusing on different things probably. Yeah. And yeah, I think there's, there's always that main, right. There's that main focus that I am like driving towards. And then as soon as I get it, I already have the others in the pipeline that I've probably been, they've been on the subconscious. They've been a focus, but not the the main focus. But I, I think, I think it's that, it's that knowing very specifically what I want that has helped a lot because it, it's given me a flight path. It's given me that drive towards a, a specific thing that I, you know, it's an achievable something that's that's there that has you know a vision in front of it and i will work until i get that thing but then i have that that the next thing in the pipe already going so i think it's that's that constant thing to look forward to and that constant thing to drive towards that i think has been a really you know a, a good thing for me and, and for my success personally yeah i love it i love it so you've built a really impressive company around mirrored media but let's go back if we can justin because it doesn't always make sense going through, but looking back, oftentimes it does. But there seems to be this time in every entrepreneur's life where they've realized one of two things, that either they wanted to make this huge difference in the world 
or they simply found, as usually is the case, that they just couldn't work for somebody else anymore. So I would love it if you could take us back to the point where you realize this about yourself and then tell me which side of the fence you see yourself on. You know, it's funny. Me as like an entrepreneur, I don't think... Definitely there, there is that, that side of like, I, it's hard for me to work for someone else. It is hard for me to pour my heart and soul into someone else's vision when I have my own visions, right? But for me, I think it came more out of just this need to, to create. Like, I mean, I remember when I was a kid and I got my first car that, you know, I got myself and I loved it and it was my passion, it's my baby and I would wash it and I'd make sure it was clean. And a neighbor was like, hey, your car is like beautiful. Would you come wash my car too? And that was like my first light bulb. Oh yeah, there's, there's a business here. That's like the first thing I saw. And I created like a little mobile car wash business in high school. And I actually sold it when I left for college. And it was like my first business. And I, I realized then like that was just the way my mind worked. When I saw something, I saw the business component of it. How do I optimize that? How can I make this into a sustainable model that could actually, you know, grow? And that was just kind of how I looked at everything. I was very strange. I was a magician as a kid. Wow. Like a, a pretty, a, a pretty decent magician. I was, you know, performed in the magic castle. I had a whole thing going and it was the same. Instead of just taking this hobby that I really liked and just kind of doing it, I turned it instantly into a business and helped other people with their business and kind of grew it. And that was just always the way I looked at every situation. I mean, so much so it's funny. My girlfriend was joking. We were, you know, talking about this, you know, podcast today and we we're joking because we were at an engagement party two nights ago and the bride to be was talking about how there was a photographer hidden in the bushes and snap photos of, you know, of the engagement surprise. And instantly the thing I went to was, oh, that's really cool. I wonder what kind of business is there. I wonder if there's a whole <laughs> thing of people, these paparazzi engagement photographers. How do we optimize that? It sounds like really interesting. I wonder if these are regular photographers. And that was the instantly where my brain went. And she was joking because she was like, most people would be like, oh, that's really interesting. Like, I want to see the photos. But for me, it instantly went to where is the business element to that and how is it working? So I think that was really my, my personal driving factor more than not really wanting to work for someone more than wanting to change the world. It was, that's just how my brain works. That's just instantly I go to, how do you create a business out of that? But by all means, okay, I think I'm a really creative person. Am I the most creative person? Absolutely not. My creatives here at Mirrored, they're amazing. I am blown away day by day with the creative that we co that comes out of here. And a lot of it is not me. But by all means, I love that idea. There's that feeling when you create something out of nothing. And I think artists and, you know, performers and all of them, they can really understand what that's like to, I mean, write a song, to create an art piece, to create something that wasn't there before. And I don't think people really think about it, but we, you know, in events as a, you know, when I create a campaign or I create an event, when I create something, it has that same element for me. And I'll remember there's, you know, every single show, it's madness and crazy or we're running around with our heads cut off. and There's a million fires to put out. But there's that like 30 seconds where I sit back and actually look around and look at this craziness that we created, that this wasn't a thing. And now all of a sudden there's 5,000 people in this space having the best time of their life. And that's because we created it. And I think that's a really powerful thing. And that's definitely what continues to drive me forward is creating those moments, those highs, because there's nothing really like that. And I think there is that, that passion for me to do something that's never been done and to change the world. And there's definitely also that moment for me of like, I can't pour my soul into someone else's dream when I have my own. But I don't know if either of those trump just the way my brain works. <laughs> That's true. And I mean, you having the creation of something out of nothing and creating these big like spectacles, basically, I mean, is absolutely like where your success comes from. I mean, people could do this quote unquote same thing as you, but it wouldn't be in the same way. If you don't have that, I think, passion or something behind it, and it, it's not, not passion per se, but like, you know what I mean? Seeing the sort of magic behind it and that you are creating this huge experience. Yeah, I mean, no pun intended. And I think and I appreciate that. Thank you. Like, literally, that is it. Like we are creating magic and a lot of the stuff that we do is, it's just, it's so much fun and it creates such an experience that that's what, you know, drives fans to share and that's what makes it a successful campaign. But yeah, it comes from the passion. It comes from the fact that, you know, we all sit here, you know, we'll put in a 20 hour day and then we'll go to that event and 
you know, you, you see what you've created, you, you see what the hard work is. And I think that's really unique in the space of, you know, you pour your soul and heart into something and actually get to see the end result in a very tangible way. Yeah, I love it. All right, Justin, at the beginning, you said relentlessness is your one thing. Now, every business expert today is talking about the 80-20 rule in business. So you're supposed to do 20% of the work to get 80% of the results. You're supposed to do what you're good at and delegate the rest. Justin, can you tell me something that you're absolutely not good at in your business? Um, I'm really not good at time management at all in any way, shape, or form. I am late to everything. It's a miracle I was on time for this. I'm, I'm, I was late. I, I, I'm really bad. I'm really bad at time management. It's just there's so much to do in the day, and there's just not enough hours in the day for me to get everything done that I need to get done. And I am lucky, and I have an amazing support team around me that make sure that I am on time and at least as on time as possible, and things are getting done. But yeah, it my time management, and ironically, also my organization is not the best. Like organization, as far as like business organization is great. I mean, I, I, I nerd out on business things, right? I, I, I nerd out on, on business ideals and creative ways to run a business, but actual physical organization, if you were to see my desktop on my computer right now, it would give you anxiety attack. I mean, there's literally probably 10,000 things on my desktop, which gives my assistant an anxiety attack every time she sees it. But yeah, I think that those are my two things that I think really I strive to work on on the daily. And luckily, as you mentioned, I've been able to find a really good way to outsource to help keep me sane and keep the business running smoothly. Yeah. As long as being like self-aware enough to realize that that is your weakness and then taking action to kind of fix it as much as possible. It's hard to make more hours in the day, though. Justin. It, you know, I've been I've been trying. And if you figure it out, let me know. <laughs> so nerding out on business, though, like like are you like an operations sort of nerd with like SOPs and like sorting out systems within your business, do you mean? Or yeah, I think it's strategy? really interesting both. I think it's really interesting to figure out kind of what works for you and for your team. I think, you know, look, I've I really think of my team here as a family. Like they are my family. I would not be in the position I am without them. And we you know we work in a really stressful environment and you know we find ways to have fun in the office. And I think we have a really fun office culture, but it's kind of figuring out, seeing what some of my competitors, you know, other experiential agencies, other advertising marketing agencies, how they kind of structure their teams and their business. And I, you know, I don't think we're structured like anyone else. I don't think our workflow is like anyone else, um, even though we're doing similar work. Um, and I think that's what I really like to nerd out on. I mean, we meet we, I meet with every single one of my employees once a week, normally on Fridays, and kind of go through what's working, what isn't. And I think we've found really interesting ways to kind of figure out what that workflow is in a way that kind of makes everyone happy and makes us work efficiently and effectively. And that's kind of what I nerd out on is continuously like, you know, changing our model little by little to see kind of what works, what gets everyone happy, what gets everyone working right. And then also like P&L stuff, I really enjoy the finance side of it and kind of looking, doing a deep dive into each of our campaigns individually to see, you know, where we didn't, you know, where we made a little bit more money, where we didn't make money, kind of looking at that end as a line by line and kind of really doing a deep dive into each of the campaigns. I find it really interesting. It's awesome. And so sitting down, this is probably a good segue into like, sitting down with each of your teammates, possibly on Fridays each week discussing what's working, what's not, but let's sort of segue into projects and if this comes out of those conversations or not. But projects is a loose term. So anything within your company, I'm assuming you're not looking at starting a whole new business at this point, but maybe you are. But as someone like yourself, I mean, you look at everything, like you said, with the photographer in the bushes, that's like a, a business around it. So you have ideas, obviously, and you can only do so many so I would love to know, Justin, what your process is, whether it's a written process or just a gut internal process, but what is the process that you go through today to decide when a new project is worth yours and your team's time, energy, and resources? And it's a really interesting question. I think for me, you mentioned it before that there has to be an element of passion behind what we do. And I think I like the fact that we are a more boutique agency. I have the benefit of getting to pick my clients. We are, you know, thank God in a place where we're not scrounging for business. I'm not having to pick anything that just comes our way. So it's nice. I think we get to really sit and listen to the client, listen to what their goals are, what their KPIs are, 
and think to ourselves, A, is this something that we like? Do we believe in the product? Do we believe in the vision? Do we believe in the client? And B, is it something that we think we can actually do? Is it something that we can add value to? And a lot of times, and this is horrible, C, is the client willing to do what we want? Because what we love doing is pushing the needle. I love pushing the needle. I love creating something that's never been done before and being really creative. And a lot of clients are just too by the book, too in the box, and they want a more traditional campaign. They want a more traditional, whatever that may be, project. And sometimes it doesn't give us the ability to really spread our wings in a way that you know is creative and worth our time. So for me, it really doesn't come down to the money at all. I mean, you know, I've taken on plenty of clients that were making significantly less than I would with another client that we turned down just because what we're creating out of it is so much cooler. (laughs) It's just way more fun. So I'm going to go with that because the case study I'm going to get out of that, the press I'm going to get out of that, and just the personal enjoyment that we're all going to get working on that is going to be way more fun than working on something that would be super boring and probably make us more money. Yeah. So then, and it's really a team effort. It's, I mean, ultimately, yes, I, I, I'm the one who signs the contract, but really it's all of us sitting down and, and Mondays is really what that is. Mondays is really when we look at, you know, okay, what's on our plate, what's coming up and whatever, what are our opportunities? And we'll, we'll sit, we'll have this brainstorm of like, okay, this is what the client's asking for. This is what they're wanting. Let's come up with a bunch of dope ideas and, you know, think of any of these, you know, stick against a wall and if we get excited about them. And that's normally kind of the situation that we get in. And I think that's that's how I know that's kind of my gut check is like, am I bored within two seconds of these conversations or is this something I think, you know, I can see myself working on? Because in the end of the day, I'm still really hands on with everything and I'm going to have my hands in it. So is it something that I'm going to enjoy? Is it something I see mirrored really digging their their heels into and myself digging my heels into? Are there times that like people on your team will push you to do something that you don't think is right, but they feel and have the passion for that will work. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look at, I, 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 I don't pretend to know everything by any means. I've surrounded myself with people much smarter than I, and I listen to their advice and I listen to, you know, their passions. There, there have been many times and I can think of one very recently that one of my, you know, one of my guys here was like, Hey, I really want to do this. And I think it could be really good for us. It wasn't something that I necessarily thought, you know, really thought about. And we wound up doing it and it was awesome. It was really fun. It was great. We made some really good contacts and we got some great footage out of it. And it was a lot of fun. To, but we made good money on it as well. And, you know, it's not just something necessarily I would have, you know, pushed for, but it was great. It wound up being awesome. And I'm, I'm, I can only assume that you sort of have a culture where if it hadn't have turned out awesome <laughs> and like you're like, this isn't something I would do, but OK, let's do it because I trust you. And then it's like, oh, wow, that didn't work at all. And we didn't make any money. Yeah. And, and it would have been fine. Is this something you push? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it would have been whatever. Like, like we're in we're in the business of risk. Like right. we're, we're in a high risk, high reward business in the sense of like these are live events a lot of times and stuff goes wrong and it happens. And I think it's one of the things of then that person would have learned how to check their gut a little bit more. And the next time they brought something to me, they would have that, you know, in the pipe of knowing like, okay, interesting that I would have brought, you know, this is the same feeling as last time. Let me do a little bit more, you know, background check, make sure this is right. This is right. This is right. And I think that's, it's a learning curve. Just like, you know, it took me a while to, you know, figure out, harness my vision into reality. They're doing the same. And I think I, I hope that I've created a culture in which, you know, People can take those risks and bring me a lot of different opportunities. And then together we find out kind of what works and what doesn't. And there's a lot of times it's that's, you know, a you're learning while doing it in the process. But that happens. It, it, they don't. That happens. Exactly. Yeah, totally. All right, Justin. Well, this has been an absolute blast, man. I want to wrap up on one final question for you. This idea I'm working with calling the entrepreneurial gap, which seems to be this, this place that we live in as entrepreneurs, as dreamers, as creatives, right? We're always, we're always, no matter what we accomplish, we always see our success in the future. So in one month, when you hit that revenue metric, in six months, when you land that client, whatever it happens to be, that next thing you focus on, right before you hit that, as you've already said, you already have your sights on the next one, which is awesome and totally absolutely what we need. But sometimes we look so successful from the outside, and yet we never see ourselves as success because it's like you're walking towards the horizon 
further you walk, the further away it always, always gets. So you started mowing lawns when you were a teenager. You sold a business. You went to university. You've now created a really successful company. And I'm sure you want to do a lot of things still. But could you stop right now, Justin? Turn and look behind you. Highs, lows, wins, and losses. Tell me how you feel about the whole journey up until today. Wow. I mean, look, I... I'm I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of where we are at this exact second. If we were to stop at this exact second and I turned around and looked at, you know, since 2011, mirrored media, you know, where where we've come as a company, where I've come and kind of where I've come from, from, (laughs) from the start, I'm definitely proud of, of where I am. I think it's been a wild ride. It's been crazy. I think I've, I've learned so much. My highs and lows are quite drastic. There's been some high highs and some low lows, but I definitely am proud of, of where I am today. I, I still think there's a lot farther to go and I think it's hard to not look into the future. But, you know, if, if, I, if we stop today, I think my legacy would, I think there, there would be something there, right? There would be, you know, Mirrored has at least gotten to a place where we have made our mark on the industry and made our mark within our clients and within the fan base. And we have some really standout creative that I think, you know, will hold the test of time for a little at least of kind of pushing the boundaries of what experiential marketing is. And I hope amongst my employees, amongst my family here, amongst our clients, you know, I personally have done them right. Right. And I've been a good CEO and partner and client and vendor and kind of, you know, at least push them farther than maybe they thought they could have, or, you know, brought in different elements and different ideas than they have. And I, I think I personally am proud of that element of, the, the team that I've created here, I think, is probably my 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 most proud thing of I've created a family here that I brought a bunch of people together that didn't know each other that are working cohesively together for an overarching vision that I think they personally have personal ownership in and they feel passionate about. And they've helped me create my my dream into a reality. And I hope I've helped them kind of in advance in their career and advance in their mindset and their creativity and their executional ability. And I think that's something that I'm proud of is my growth as a, you know, as a leader, I think has been so much you know, greater growth than I ever could have asked for. And it's something you don't really think about going into it. You don't think about, okay, I need to be a better, you know, I need to do that. And I think that's something that I'm very happy about. I love it. I love it, man. It's a beautiful answer. Now you can stop looking back. I'll allow you to push forward and look forward now because I know <laughs> Thank you need you. to. <laughs> it hurts my <laughs> brain. <that> good. <laughs> so we've got to talk about Mirrored Media in passing, Justin. But could you specifically tell the listener now about Mirrored Media and where to track you guys down? Yeah, what's Mirrored Media? <laughs> uh, I'll do the pitch. Just Just we are a, uh, we're a full service experiential marketing firm. So we're all about creating high impact, enduring lifestyle campaigns. And personally, like we specialize in music and entertainment. That's our niche. So we really are all about helping a brand, normally like a Fortune 500 company, reach their target market through authentic, standout, come a win-win for everyone involved. So for me, it stemmed out of working in music my entire life and seeing kind of this the brand. You know, both parties are speaking two different languages. They had a hard time really finding a common ground. And a lot of times one party would, they won and the other one lost and vice versa. And that just created a hostile environment, I felt. So we really look, we do everything from ideation to execution. We help come up with creative. We, my team is built of, you know, half music, half marketing. So we understand both sides. We speak both languages. We're able to look at it objectively and create a holistic campaign that meets all sides goals. So everyone walks away happy. And ultimately we're giving an experience to the fan that they're going to want to share for us. It's all about creating, making the fans into the marketing arm. So creating something that's so dope that they want to share it and they want to talk about it and they become the marketer themselves. And that's kind of what we've done. So we do a lot with the music, a lot with influencers. I know, you know, we mentioned full screen between full screen and awesomeness and all the other, you know, major influencer markets, you know, we do a lot within that. And then a lot within like movies, entertainment, TV shows. That's kind of our, has become our niche. Very cool. Very cool. That's mirroredmedia.com. Yeah. Mirroredmedia.com. And are you on any social media? I am. I am at J Lefkove, J L E F K O V on pretty much everything. Excellent. So I'll track down some of those links for social media as well as mirroredmedia.com. 
and full screen that we talked about. Uh, I'll link to them as well in the show notes for everyone once you're done walking, working, whatever it is you're doing right now. So Justin, once again, man, thanks so much for taking the time to share and join me today. I really do appreciate it. And please just keep doing what you're doing, man, because it is awesome and inspiring to watch. Hey, I appreciate all the kind words. Thanks so much for having me. It was so much fun. I really appreciate it. Well, that was a fun conversation. I thank you so much again, Justin, for joining me. And I thank you out there. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed being part of it. It was Justin's a smart, smart guy up to a lot of cool things. And I feel like we got to some interesting and insightful sort of places, which is really cool. So going back through the conversation, we're at that point of the show where I needed to go back and I needed to listen to, to find something that stands out. It's always hard for me going through. I just, I mark down spots where I need to go back and then I go back and listen. And I had seven spots to go back to. So I went back and I got it down to four. Then I got it down to three and I got it down to two. So I went back one more time. And that last time I went through, there was this one thing that Justin said, this one thing that was just so very, very clear. Did you get it? Did you hear it? Let's do it. Let's find the hack. That feeling when you create something out of nothing. And I think artists and, you know, performers and all of them, they can really understand what that's like to, I mean, write a song, to create an art piece, to create something that wasn't there before. And I don't think people really think about it, but we, uh, you know, in, in events as a, you know, when I create a campaign or I create an event, when I create something, it has that same element for me. And I'll remember there's, you know, every single show, it's madness and crazy or we're running around with our heads cut off. and There's a million fires to put out. But there's that like 30 seconds where I sit back and actually look around and look at this craziness that we created, that this wasn't a thing. And now all of a sudden there's 5,000 people in this space having the best time of their life. And that's because we created it. And that's the hack. Justin, Justin, Justin. I love this. I love this. And this, so this idea of creatives creating something out of nothing, you extended it to creatives, to artists, to musicians. I'm going to extend it even further. I'm going to push it to entrepreneurs. You have an idea, you take an idea, or you find a place in a market and you literally create something from your head, from an idea, turn it into a reality that then deals in commerce. That's business. Yet it's this idea where I love how Justin says, and most people don't even think about it. He's thinking of his customers or people taking part in the events, how they don't think of it as sort of magical and that it's this huge, massive event and they're kind of like blown away by it. And it's because we created it literally because they came up with an idea and wanted it to be magic. So what I'm trying to get out of this for you is it's going kind of deep into it, which is the idea that there are a lot of events companies. There's a lot of companies that sort of, quote unquote, on the surface, you might think do what Mirrored Media and Justin and his team do. Yet this is the essence of it. The idea that he's saying how he feels so passionate, they're creating this amazing experience, this sort of magical thing that other people aren't even so much aware of, but they are. Like, it's not that you have to know about it sort of on the surface, but underneath, we can tell when we deal with companies that their founder, the people in front, like the team or the person in front of that team, Justin in this case, when they have that sort of feeling that like when they feel so passionately that they are creating a magical sort of experience for people, it kind of relates and kind of comes through to the product or service. So if you want to create a podcast, if you want to create a piece of software, if you want to create an experiential marketing company, if you want to create a Facebook marketing company, put that magic in it. Put that really, truly believe in it and create something. And don't worry about if your customers or if other people in your market do it that way. That is what sets people apart. That is what sets companies apart. They don't really know that it's there but it is. And that's why they'll keep coming back to you and coming back to you. You're creating something out of nothing with whatever business or anything that you start. And when you do that, do it with that creative sort of passion 
and that drive to create that magical experience for your end customer. Justin, thank you. All right, well, this is kind of interesting news. This is, so this office is where Hack the Entrepreneur started. Uh, 250, I think six or seven episodes now, and I'm packing this office up in two days and moving to Toronto with my family. That's just how it is. So it's kind of interesting. This is the last time I'm recording here, which is cool. It's not going to make any difference to you. It's going to sound the same. It'll sound just as good. Don't worry. But yeah, in November, I'm going to be holding a meetup. If you're around Toronto or in the Toronto area or want to be, then come and hang out. It'll be fun. It'll just be an evening or something or a weekend. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get closer to that. But yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I know there's quite a few of you there in the that region. And so I think it'll be cool. It'll be the first of hopefully many. So don't worry if you can't make it, but it would be great to see you. I would really dig it. Yeah, it'd be fun. So yeah, this is it. It is fun. I'll see you as the, they say on the other side. But as I, as I said, you won't actually notice a difference. It's just the way it's going to be. I'm just going to be in a different location, but you know, it's the beauty of podcasting. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to stop by today. You know, I hope that I truly appreciate it. If not, I, I do. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> All right. It's been fun. Take care. And uh, until next time, keep hacking the entrepreneur. Okay.